It's an unboxing of my Inwin H-Frame. Uh, thanks to Johnny at Inwin for getting this to me. Uh, this will be part of the project, which I'm going to call Pretty Bench, or Sexy Bench. We'll see. Um, this I'm reason one of the reasons I'm doing this unboxing is just to show, you know, when you spend like a thousand plus on a case, what you get. And normally, um, Inwin does a pretty good job of packaging stuff. So this is a limited edition case. There was only 500 of these. So let's take a look. Um, the tape was kind of loose, so I cut it, but I haven't taken it out of the case yet. Uh, right away, we open the box and get the styrofoam. So this, you get a VIP card. I don't know if you can see that. Helps you feel special. When you, you know, when you buy a high-end premium case, any little bit, you know, makes the process a little more feel like you got your money's worth. Okay, looks like we do have some goodies here. This case does come with a matching power supply, so we'll take a look. Ooh, nice and shiny. I don't know if you can focus on that or not, with the camera focus on that, but this power supply will match uh, the case. So we'll put that to the side. And what's this here? I assume this is just going to be ah, cables. Obviously, I'm going to make my own set of cables. I'm not going to use these because they're just black ribbons. So to the side. And let's get on the other end here. Let's see what this is. Uh, zip ties. Cleaning cloth. For PSU, I guess it's a mounting rail. Thumb screws for the glass or something. And mounting screws, a sort of screws and junk. Nicely labeled. And let's see what else we get here. Throw this to the side. Your books. Uh, let's see, just standard N1 H frame user manual. Nice and flex. Hmm. Pretty thick. Not bad. To the side. Okay. Let's get the case out itself. Alright. Okay. This case is, well, the whole package was 60 pounds. So hopefully the case is, itself is not 60 pounds. But um, let me just see if we can get a hold of it. Alright. Okay. It's uh, not that light. Not that heavy either. Okay, so what is that? Is that the bottom? Yeah, that's the bottom. Okay. All right. So let me uh, just cut so I can get this darn thing out. So I took both pieces of the glass off. Otherwise, it was just reflecting too much, so you couldn't see inside. Um, this is the pretty much the case with both sides of the glass off, uh, with the matching power supply at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. I can zoom in on it. Yeah, uh, it is kind of like a light neon green, maybe, but with you know you get the attention to detail. I don't know if the camera will focus. Uh, the nice Inwin logos on the screws. It's not focusing. All right, I'll show that later. Um, yeah, very premium. Uh, all black aluminum, anodized. Uh, this part, the green parts over here. Uh, will light up and you can adjust the brightness. Uh, other than that, yeah, this is a very typical in wind case where the inside cutout is kind of just semi random, right? I mean, I guess these kind of do make sense uh, for your regular wires. Uh, wire management is not going to be easy in this case. Uh, my plan for the back is I'm going to probably extend uh, the mounting points for the glass. These mounting point bars can probably be extended out. And then gives me more room to work in the back if I extend those mounts. As for the build itself, uh, my current plan is I'm going to move the motherboard down a little bit so I can hold a thicker radiator. You can see the, the mount actually comes out. Here's a top rad 360. Uh, I think it only takes up to 45 millimeters, which 
I mean, this case really technically only supports one radiator, right? So I know there are people that have used brackets to put one in the front, but I don't, I don't think that's a good look. I think it throws off the balance. So my plan is to put a thicker radiator on top. I will have to move the motherboard down a little bit, but I can see there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is eight I.O. slots. I can definitely move it down one, no problem. Um, other than that, see, I also had plans that maybe I'll cut this part off completely because I don't think, I don't think it adds anything to my final product. So, but then it looks nice there. Kind of looks like it belongs there. So it's, it'll, it'll be tough. Uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt to throw some drives. The point of this build really is to, to be honest, it's going to be a test bench, but I want a pretty test bench. You know, I don't want that test bench look that everybody has. I want to have something special as a test bench. Um, but n it will have that test bench look, but at the same time, it will have a look of, you know, like kind of showy. Uh, that's a, that's one of the reasons I'm okay with just having a 360. Um, what I'll do is I'll have the 360 rad. And if I can mod it for a 420, I'll mod it for a 420. And it'll just pretty much do the CPU. I'm going to make a custom cover here down on the PSU here and I'll try to run QDCs like right in here and you can just dock it in but looking at the wiring space now that may be or may not be an issue I have to see um, and let's see I had originally wanted to do something here right so something here uh, ideally even if I could move the radiator even though it's a little bit not what I prefer, but if I can move the radiator to the front and then I put my custom distro on the top, uh, that would have a nice, you know, straight down aesthetic rather than this right turn deal that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, so I guess we'll see. But this is just a quick look at the case out the box. It's a very pretty case, especially in person. Um, I don't think you can get the other colors anymore. There was a white, blue amber, black, and the green and black. I know you can still buy the green and black on Amazon. So this is the case, mostly disassembled. Well, I say mostly because I did put these two frame pieces back together so I can give an overview of what I've done here. Uh, by default, this case only supports a 45 millimeter rad. I think I mentioned that earlier. And my intention is to put a 60 millimeter rad. Now, if I were to do that without making a modification, my fan would hit into the motherboard approximately here, okay? So what I've done is I re-tapped the motherboard mounts to drop it by 20 millimeters. This is precisely the width of one PCI slot. So any, if I wanted to, you know, horizontally place cards in or whatever and it will still line up perfectly uh we, there's nine i think there's nine expansion slots so pretty much i moved the board to the very bottom in most cases you'll have one extra if the case is large enough so if you ever want to do assuming that you have an open clearance here in the back for, for the io you can always drop it down to get gain some radiator thickness so this is a 55 millimeter bits power xf I plan to replace this with a 60 millimeter EK XE radiator, uh, since this is going to be an all EK build. Uh, you can't really have bits of power parts in a EK sponsored build, can you? Right. So you can see here, I have an in-wind Saturn fan. These fans are, I want to say, budget RGB fan pricing. They're about three for 35. Um, they seem to light up pretty nice. I'll do a video about them. But the number one selling point on these is they are daisy chainable. Now, these this kind of daisy chaining usually comes on fairly expensive RGB fans. This this daisy chain actually comes from the Inwin Aura fans a couple of while ago. So this this type of connector and daisy chaining is actually patented by Inwin. So if I were to put this fan here, I uh, can't really see, but you can see I still have clearance. Right, so another five millimeters with the XC, I would still have clearance. And that was the main point in moving the motherboard down. You'll notice I removed all of the blades 
uh, that come across the top and the back and the bottom. I will be powder coating these pieces, uh, specific blades, not all of them. The overall coloring scheme will be kind of a titanium matte gray and the green that matches the mounting hardware and the green blade itself on top and the third color will be black. So all the sleeving, everything will be those three colors, uh, fittings included. Um, so that's pretty much part one. I still have to make a lot of things for this case, this row. As I mentioned, I have to make the back mounting cable for the wires, but one step at a time. I'm still waiting for a lot of stuff. Some stuff is kind of hard to do without having blocks on hand. It's, it's kind of hard to map things. But yeah, so that's part one of many parts to go. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe.